Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial about FreeCAD CFDOF. This is the fifth tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you the simulation of a journal bearing. This simulation is similar to the QUET flow. The QUET flow I've shown already in the tutorial number four. The difference to the QUET flow is the eccentricity of the shaft. This is a simulation model. We will calculate with a speed of 2500 revolutions per minute or transformed into omega. This is 261.799. The journal bearing in this model has a width of 10 millimeter. The eccentricity is 1.5 millimeter. The shaft diameter is 45 millimeters and the bearing diameter is 50 millimeters. Um, the angle better you see in that uh, picture, this is the attitude angle. It can be calculated in advance. Just to say some things in advance, um, this is not a real journal bearings. Normally the dimensions are not really good for a journal bearing. I've chosen these dimensions in order to get a good mesh. And so I made the difference between the bearing and the shaft a bit larger and the eccentricity is a bit small, but uh, this is good for meshing. But the force you will see, they are very low. So this would not work practically. We are now calculating the lifting force. The dynamic viscosity eta, it's given as uh, 0 0.104 Pascal per second. The circumferential speed is 5.89 meter per second. The Reynolds number is uh, 123.19. The critical Reynolds number is uh, 130.6. So it might be that we have small turbulence. For that reason, we will use the Reynolds model, the Rans model. The Sommerfeld number is given for the eccentricity of 1.5 millimeter to 0 0.0952. The lifting pressure is 0 0.00021 Newton per square millimeter. As I said in advance, this is very small. This is because of the dimensions. The lifting force is 0 0.105 Newton and the attitude angle beta is 47.305 degrees. Now we are going to build up the model with FreeCAD. We make a new file and go to the part design workbench. We make a new body. We will make this sketch in the XY plane and say, okay. First thing that we make is to, um, to construct, to design a, a circle. So this is the first circle. Then we build the next circle. This will be the, the bearing itself. Okay. Now we switch to the construction mode and we draw one line between the both circles. So that's okay. Now first we define the angle between the line and the y coordinate the angle is will be so the angle is 47.305 degree this is the attitude angle then we define the distance
The distance is 1.5 millimeter. This is the eccentricity. Then we define the diameter of the shaft. Then we define the diameter of the of the bearing. Okay, this is our model. And we can close. In the next step, we will patch this up to 10 millimeters. We say okay. And now our model has finished. We need one further body for the mesh improvement. For that, we go to the part workbench and we insert a cube. We go to the definition of the cube. The length of the cube is 80 millimeter and the width is also 80 millimeter. The height is 20 millimeter and we will change the position of this cube. So the position will be minus 30 millimeter. And in epsilon direction, the same minus 30 millimeter. And in set direction, minus five millimeter. Okay. Now our model is complete and we can go to the CFD workbench. So first what we do, we um, make an analysis container. So the next thing we can do is to, um, to edit the boundary conditions. So we click on the inner diameter and create a boundary condition. This will become the rotating wall velocity constraint, but um, since it's not available, we say translating and we input a dummy value of 10 meter per second. We click on the outer radius. And this is the boundary condition is a wall, no slip. That's okay. So, um, but we will rename these labels. This will be renamed to shaft. And this boundary condition is renamed to outer radius. Now we can start to mesh our model. We go to pad, go to the um, mesh definition. In this case, we want to use the CF mesh. This is okay. The base element size will be 0 0.5 millimeter. But uh, we want to have a, some kind of refinement. So we close and we go to the mesh definition. And here we can click on the definement of the mesh refinement. In this case, it'll be defined via an internal volume. So we want to have a factor of 0 0.6. The internal volume is this. We add this. Now I think um, we change to 0 0.75. This is the initial value. This should be OK. We go to OK, go to the pad mesh, and execute the meshing. First, we write the mesh case, and then we start running the mesher. So now meshing is complete. Um, it took uh, 44 seconds for the meshing. This was very fast. 
we go to a load surface mesh. So we see that um, the body is fully meshed and it looks quite well. We can take a closer look. So we make the mesh refinement invisible. We click on it. Now we press the space bar and we also go to the cube and makes this also invisible. So we can take a look inside the mesh. The mesh looks good. We have a, the refinement that we intended to have. So now we can edit all other things. We can go to the physics model. We want to have a viscous model. We will use um, a turbulence model. This is okay. Fluid properties will be the oil. This is okay. Um, yes, we need for the first start, we need some initial initializing. We go to initialize fields. We will specify a value for the velocity in the x direction. We say five meter per second. And the initial value for the pressure will be 10 Pascal. So we click on OK. And now we can go to the solver. We make a double click. And we write the case. Now we must edit it because we must change the rotation and we must change the um, control dict file. So first we go to the dictionary um, zero. We go to the file u and edit this with notepad. Here we see that we have a boundary with shaft. This was initially a translating wall. Velocity, we will exchange this to rotating wall velocity. So next thing, what we have to edit is the, the origin. The origin is 0, 0, 0. OK. Next parameter is the axis. The axis will be 0, 0, minus 1. Don't forget the semicolon, otherwise you get trouble. And the last value is omega. This is the rotational speed. Um, we will edit 261.799. So now our boundary for the shaft is complete. We can save. And we can go to the next file. The next file is in system. It's a control dict file. We say edit with notepad. And here I go to the tutorial by Mr. Oxtoby. I make a copy and paste. And I insert the, the parameters, the commands for the evaluation of the force. So patches, in this case, it's the shaft. And uh, density is 870.0. So we save this. And now we can start the solution. Now the simulation has finished. You can see that the simulation was very fast. It, uh, the iteration was achieved after 330 iterations. This took um, six minutes. This is very good. So we can review the results with Paraview. We click on Paraview and review the results. Now we can go to the last simulation step. We go to so first, what we take a look on is the distribution of the pressure, and what we see is that the that we have the highest pressure um, in the on the lowest point. We have the highest pressure here. So this is what we intended to do. We wanted to have the 
ice pressure um, here because we want to have a lifting force and this seems to work. Um, the pressure, sometimes we have uh, values in plus and minus. So here we have the highest values, here we have the, the lowest value. This seems to be okay. So next thing, what we want to do, we want to take a look on the velocity, um, on the direction of the velocity. So we use the glyphs. Um, we reduce the number of sample points to 200. And we take the velocity from, uh, from this one, from from velocity and then we take a look what what's happening. Okay, we can't see the glyphs because it's hidden by the by this model, so we will reduce the opacity. We go to twenty percent. Um, it's okay. So you see that um, that we have a circular flow. This is what we um, wanted to have. Some glyphs go in the opposite direction. This is uh, near the, the outer radius, but on the inner radius we have a positive velocity. This is um, this is okay, and this seems to work. So we can close our view, and we can take a look on the results. We go to edit and take a look on the post-processing file. We go to the forces. So the force we are interested in is a force in Y direction. And here we have a lifting force of 4 Newton meter. The lifting force is a bit higher than um, um, than expected in the in the model, but uh, this is because uh, um, this model is more precise. Um, it's important to take a look on the on the force that comes out of pressure. So you see that most force in y direction is generated by the by the pressure and the force that's generated by the viscosity, it's very low, so this result is mainly dominated by the pressure. So this is some kind of lifting force. And we also have a force in, in x direction, which is uh, larger. Normally, this should be zero, but um, yes, some, there are some deviations in the model. Now let's take a look on the results. On the left side, you see the results from the analytical calculation with Sommerfeld number. So we receive a lifting force of 0 0.1 Newton. On the right side, you see the results uh, from the simulation with FreeCAD, CFDOF, and, and the turbulence model runs. We get a lifting force of 4.1 Newton. Comments for the practical use. This model is a theoretical model. In practical use, the difference between the diameter of the shafts and of the bearings would be much smaller. For practical use, the modifications of the viscosity of the oil due to higher temperature must be considered. So in this case, we only consider that the temperature remains constant, but uh, this uh, journal bearing generates losses and generates heat, so the oil temperature will increase and the viscosity will be lower. For practical use, modifications like oil supply, grooves and so on can be considered with this model, so uh, for practical use this model might be useful. Conclusions. The CFD solution is different to the calculation with Sommerfeld number. The reason is that we are very far away from a normal journal bearing. Normally the diameters would be much more close together and we are not in the range where the Sommerfeld was intended to be. 
for the measure CF mesh, a refinement via a solid can be defined. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.